For it TV, the world is thinking. The third thing I want to put on the table is that racial categories, while they are in flux, and it's clear that they are, they are in some ways much more stable, they're in some ways very stable, and they are in other ways very uh, dynamic. They're stable in as much as this panel has been created to ask about how race influences uh, political behavior, and in many ways, we are taking race for granted. So I want you all to think, to, to, to sort of suspend your disbelief of that assumption. I'm going to ask you to do that within the context of a couple of things. Um, one, race is very stable in as much as the federal government codifies it. When you fill out a form to go to college, to get a job, to apply for a driver, not, maybe not to apply for a driver's license, you, you consistently write down, you classify yourself, right? The federal government does the same thing and it has a reason for doing, it has many reasons for doing it. We may discuss and consider some of those. But what I want to emphasize is that on the one hand, race is a very stable concept that has remained stable in these four categories over the course of United States history. And it is in the census, why is it in the census? Why do we uh, enumerate race in the census? In the very first census, what was the reason why we had to tell the difference between whites and blacks? Say again. Representation, and what was, for what reason is that? The three-fifths clause, right? The three-fifths clause, we wouldn't have had to enumerate race except for the fact that black people in the United States were counted only as three-fifths of people. So three-fifths of, of people were counted. That's why we enumerate race in the Constitution. Or not, it's not enumerated in the Constitution, we enumerate it in the U.S. Census, and it has very deep, very sort of deep roots as to why we continue to do so. Um, I want to raise another question, though, with respect to just how dynamic categories are. What do you think the fastest growing racial category is in the United States today? It is the fastest growing one. What is the one uh, in terms of its uh, actual numbers? What's the high, what's the, what is the fastest projected to grow in terms of what it was before, 20 years ago? the multiracial category. You are now allowed to, at, to call yourself more than one race. And um, I was watching a video, a, a YouTube thing, someone said, has anybody ever heard of Russell Peters? Yeah. It's hilarious. <laughs> if you get the chance, uh, Russell Peters with one L, R-U-S-S-E-L Peters, he's an Indian comic. And he's, he has this great rap on um, mixing people. So he says, I, I'm gonna steal from him for a moment, he says, Let, what should we, you know, we're all going to mix at some point. We're not all going to be one thing anymore. We're going to mix. So what if you put together, so he says something like, you know, let's mix people together and see what we get. What if we put together a Jamaican and Italian, what do you get? A pastafarian. What about, an, what about a woman from Iceland and a man from Cuba? You'd get ice cubes. And in the, a woman from the Philippines and a man from Holland, a, a jalapeno. Now, while it's funny and silly in a way, it also speaks to a much broader phenomenon that is occurring. The multiracial population is among the fastest growing populations in the United States. It is also the case that something like 65% of all multiracial people in the U.S. are under the age of 18. So if there is a demographic group to look for, it's multiracials. But the question remains then, who will they identify with? Who, how will we identify them? Especially as the government has given people the option to choose more than one race.